Under fire, Red Devils gaffer Eric Ten Hag, he spoke ahead of the game. He said that he hasn't been able to implement his usual style of play at the club, but he's determined to turn things around. The intention is clear, but the execution isn't there. But I can't play like Ajax because they're different players. So I came here with my philosophy based on possession, but also to combine it uh, with the DNA of Manchester United. I think we played very good football last season. And this season, the philosophy is not different. We know the standards here, and we have to match the standards uh, every day. Yeah, we had two f- big setbacks, but we will fight back. And this dressing room is strong, and this staff is strong, and this manager is strong to put this right. Uh, he, as you would imagine, is dominating all the back pages. Lots mm-hmm. of column inches about Eric Ten Hag. Is he feeling the pressure and so on? I, I, listen, we did so much on Man United yesterday and then my team, so I don't really want to go on and on about Man United. But I want to, I want to open it up to football fans about their manager or managers at other clubs and how important that role is mm. on the back of what Eric Ten Hag is feeling because of course a lot of people are saying the players are, are so much to blame but but let me ask you Benty right and not just looking at Man United you would have played your best football under one of your favourite managers mm. I'm guessing yeah. and you would have been least up for it under Paul Lambert who you never got on with yeah. is that fair across the board do you think um, it's not even so much of a case of at being a centre forward, you always want to score regardless who's in charge, even if you hate the manager. Okay. Um, but a, a team unit, <clears throat> 11, rather than just goal scorers? You'd say so, but then so how many times have we seen, and, and this one, it, do, it does sometimes come down to the players as well as the manager, because how many times have we seen a team struggling and the players just not even pulling their weight? New manager comes in and all of a sudden overnight, Boom. things change. Things change. Una Emery, a prime example yeah, at Aston Villa. Overnight, things change, but I mean, he says a lot there, Tenar, which is... I'm, I'm like, what? Because he speaks about the philosophy at Ajax and he can't play that with the current players he's got. But surely Manchester United signed him because of the football that he played at Ajax. That type of philosophy. So if that's the philosophy that he knows, you can't... The Man United can't sign uh, Eric Ten Hag off the football that he plays at Ajax and that philosophy for him to get rock up at United and not play that... Do you know what I mean? And not play that, that philosophy. Yeah. But when you look at some of the signings, he talks about he can't do that with Ajax, but he signed players that he's worked with before, the likes of Anthony, you know, Lissandro Martinez, mm. I think he's been Van about before, Onana. Mm-hmm. These are players that he knows really well, so clearly he he wants to, like he's been successful in Holland, um, the Netherlands, sorry, because he played that particular brand of football. So why would you then get the opportunity of a lifetime, which it was at the time, Manchester United, to not to come away from that? But, you, but, you're, never, you're never ever going to succeed. But when I hear people blaming the players, and I, I listen, a part of the blame goes to the players because they're a part of that. Yeah, of course. Down tools. Right. But a manager's job is to manage. Okay? If he's not getting the best out of a player, right, then you have to question his relationship with that player. Yeah. The flip side of that is, I mentioned it earlier on with Eddie Howe, right? Joe Linton, Almiron. These are players that all of a sudden we're seeing a different kind yeah. of level of play. You you look at Ange Postacoglu, mm. right? At Spurs. Um, Udogi, right? He went out on loan at Udinese. He's brought him back. Turned him into... You know, a brilliant, brilliant player yeah. for Spurs. Saar is using now. Basuma is using now. These are all players that were available to the last manager, yeah. but he didn't manage. He didn't use them. Mm-hmm. So, although, personally, the players are culpable for some of the blame, yeah. if there's a success story at any club, personally, it's the manager you pat on the back. And if things aren't working at a club, it's the manager you go, hold yeah, on a minute. there's an element to that, and yeah, you're right. But also, as well, I think... You've got to understand what's going on in that dressing room. Like, obviously, Ten Hag's had to make some big decisions, hasn't he? Leaving certain players out, the Jane Sancho situation. Um, there might be players in that dressing room, right? But that don't agree with him. That really don't agree with and the methods. And that's maybe why they're down tools. Maybe he can. Condu- but, but if they don't agree with him, it's his job to make them agree. Yeah, right? I get it, but maybe the, the way he's conducted himself, Ten Hag, and he's the manager, so he could do what he wants. If the players are not feeling what he's doing, or. Yeah, then he's to blame. Of course he's to blame. Yeah, that's but what I'm saying. At the end of the day, that also comes down to the players. If they're not going to respect what his wishes are, but the, the dressing room can be a tough place to manage because when the things are not going well and you lose the players, and I said it yesterday, it's very hard to turn them back around. Right, let's take calls. It's a simple question. We're not aiming it at Manchester United. The role of a manager. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.